concussion would ruin your football career, so you get back to practice. Who is the judge? R. Patrick Heyman or B. F. Ralph Regent? Anyway, I never again will I have anything bad to say about athletes who get in trouble. And now I know why they do. Because they can. So you know what, athletes? Smoke all the dope you want. Drink all the beer you want. Punch your girlfriends. Punch cops. Do whatever the hell you want. I, I literally spend 10 years of trying to keep guys accountable. I take it all back. You were right. I was wrong. Because if a judge isn't going to hold you accountable or responsible, what chance does the talk show host have? Do what you want. I don't really care. That drunk bus that I have, that, that fleet of spanking, brand new, gleaming drunk buses that I have, gone. Don't call me. Do what you want. When we come back, Takeo Spikes joins us. Stay tuned. In Los Angeles. Guess I'm lucky there's no chair. I live in a cage. That's some Rayenthal haiku. 1-800-636-8686. Let's go to Dave in Detroit. Nice to have you on the show. Dave, how are you? Hello, Jim. How are you today? Great, Dave. How about you? Yeah, Jim, over the past week or so, I've been listening. Maybe he should have volunteered at bat six. Yeah, I've got to say, no props for doing something that you should have done weeks ago and only are doing now because of all the heat you're getting. Better late than never, I suppose, but dude showed his true colors and his selfishness by not accepting it the second Dusty Baker brought it up. He punched out twice and left three runners on base. So he ultimately did go to the five hole, but only after all of this. Sosa also says he still can't understand why the fans were booing him to begin with. Sammy said, quote, it was tough, but it's okay. This is part of the game. I don't see anything that people have to criticize. The first half of the season, what happened to me can happen to anybody. I just need some people to support me. Just like I said, booing is not going to help. Quote, unquote. Again, the question, can you boo a Hall of Famer? Can you boo a guy like that that's meant so much to that team, that organization, and the city? What about his thought that, quote, booing is not going to help? Hey, first of all, Cubs fans do support Sammy. Those same fans that he's calling out right now for booing him deified him throughout the years. They had his back when he spilled cork all over the infield and broke out with that ridiculous story about using a BP bat and only doing it for the fans. So I don't think he wants to cry about them needing to support him. As far as his saying, booing isn't going to help, I don't know that I've ever seen a more sensitive superstar in my life than Sammy Sosa. I just can't imagine Michael Jordan or Magic Johnson or Derek Jeter saying, booing's not going to help. They're going to go out and make some plays, get some hits, and then turn the booze into cheers. And finally, Sammy has enough goodwill in the bank that they would have accepted a slump. The fans would have accepted even the worst slump of his career. What they were booing was his selfishness, his refusal to move down in the order until now, his putting ego and pride ahead of the team. That's what they were booing. Had he come right out and said, I'm stinking it up, Dusty Baker approached me and said that I need a bat fifth, and that's what I'm going to do. If it's good for the team and it will get me going, sure, I'll do it. And they probably wouldn't have been booing him. They would have cut him a hell of a lot more slack. Booing's not going to help? You say something like that, you sound like a big baby. Jeter didn't cry. Jeter didn't say booing's not going to help. And believe me, nobody deserves a free pass more than Derek Jeter. If four World Series and caving your face in for the team doesn't get you a free pass, then nothing will. He didn't get it, and he still didn't lash out. He handled himself like a pro. So Sammy did the right thing, but he should have done it a long time ago. Across town, got the White Sox. Look out, Ozzie Gian. One night after passing a kidney stone, blasted umpire Hunter Wendelstadt, calling him, quote, a liar because of a report that he filed with Major League Baseball that resulted in Guillen receiving a two-game suspension. Guillen said, quote, Wendell Stat lied. He lied to Bob Watson. He lied to Sandy Alderson. That's why I'm more upset about it. Quote, unquote. Guillen then went on to say, and again I quote, if you get two days suspension for arguing with the umpire, that means you're a piece of bleep. You don't have the power at all. When you're a Major League manager, people have to show a little more respect than what we get. I don't blame them for suspending me, but the guy lied. Quote, unquote. So you might be wondering, what did he lie about? 
Guillen says that Wendelstad wrote in his report that Guillen told him that he was out of position on a blown call. Guillen said that's the lie. Furthermore, and this is great, not only was Guillen not concerned about Wendelstad holding a grudge against him, he insisted he's going to hold a grudge against the umpire. Quote, I will hold a grudge. If we have trouble every time I see him, good. I'll take that chance. I don't like people when they lie. You are not a real man when you lie about something. Quote, unquote. Yeah, I suppose. I don't like people when they lie either. And I would agree, you're not a real man when you lie about something. Problem is, you can't just grudge on a single umpire. If you're going to blow an umpire up like that and call him a liar publicly and then say that you will always hold it against him, you're really calling out all of them. You're not going to win a battle with these guys, even if you're right and even if he is a liar. It's irrelevant. No matter how incompetent, ignorant, dishonest, or out of position you think they are, you can't go crushing them publicly like that. It's a battle you can't win. When you're right, you're still wrong. You still lose. They've got memories like elephants. They stick together, and Ozzy's digging himself a hole. That's why you never hear guys do it. Seriously, have you ever heard a single player or a manager or an executive call an umpire a liar? No, because that makes you a marked man and your team a marked team. I mean, this isn't like Phil Jackson calling out the refs to get an edge. Calling an ump, calling out an ump won't get you an edge. It's going to cost you calls. It's just not smart. It makes no sense. You get nothing out of that. You gain nothing. You might feel better, but trust me, you're not going to get anything out of that. So some Chicago baseball for you that we can talk about. How about some New York baseball? Not everybody is cut out to be a Yankee. And apparently, Esteban Loaiza is one of those guys. The Yankees reportedly are close to sending him to Texas and apparently are willing to take prospects in return. Experiment failed. Has there ever been a worse idea for New York? Three starts. Three starts, and they want to trade the guy already. This guy made... Jeff Weaver's Yankee tenure seemed impressive. Hell, Weaver was Whitey Ford compared to this guy. They gave up on Jose Contreras, who they gave like $32 million to, to get Luiza, only to give up on him after three starts. And why not just bust a call to Ed Whitson while you're at it? Luiza. You know the boss is chewing some big league ass as we speak. Other things to talk about today. Eric Gagne got knocked around. It's not his fault. I blame that on Darren Dreyfus. Lawrence Phillips sold his conference championship ring for 20 bucks. 20 bucks to a pawn shop. Andy Pettit done for the season. Former mayor of Ohio town found naked and hammered in his yard. The mayor likes to party. A mother helped her five-year-old smoke crack in Indiana. Is that a problem? Oh, one more thing. She's a child care worker but she helped load up the glass deed for her five-year-old. Isn't that a problem? 1-800-636-6 to your show.